All right, welcome back to The Art Night. I am your host, Sean Leonard. Some people call me Smooth Wax, and I'm actually bringing you an interview I did with Ryan Matthew Cohen. He curated a show called House of Wax. It's at the Morbid Anatomy Museum here in Brooklyn, uh, and it's featuring an, um, an extensive collection of first-time scene pieces uh, from actually in Germany. Um, I, I, I could tell you all now, but it'd be better uh, to hear it from Ryan himself. So follow along, guys. Here you go. Wow. Es geht ein uraltes Spinnrad. Holy cow, guys, we have a very special edition of the Art Night. We are here at the Morbid Anatomy Museum. This is my friend, Ryan Matthew Cohen, artist, curator. How are you, Ryan? I'm good, man. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. As always. Uh, and you seem to be everywhere somehow. I don't know how you do it, but... I'm traveling. I'm traveling. It's it, something to look up to. Yeah, man, thanks. Oh, and you know, I mean, I'm excited for an opportunity like this. Uh, you've put on uh, and you've curated a very special show. Um, tell us about House of Wax. This is a very, very interesting exhibition. Um, this was, you know, the biggest project of my entire life. Um, I was offered this collection of something like 200 pieces of original waxes from uh, Munich, Germany. Uh, they date back to about 1865, and they're part of what's known as a panopticon, which was sort of a cabinet of curiosities slash uh, dime museum slash educational center. So they, they encompassed all these different things. Um, they were for education, but they were also for people learning medical sciences, and that's why you have these wonderful pieces here. Like if you were uh, a midwife, what better way than to see how a baby comes out of the vaginal canal? This is what it should look like. Right, because you don't always have the opportunity, or at that time, you didn't have the opportunity to actually witness a birth. So these were very, very important to medical science at that time. Um, and it's just amazing that they still exist and they still look so good. Um, these also were made at a time where cadavers were very, very scarce. During the mid-19th century, we didn't have refrigeration yet. So the lifespan of a cadaver was quite short. Uh, and so different artists and anatomists worked very closely together to figure out the best way to represent the human body so that it was lifelike, but um, also could be used for a very, very long time. And they thought to be used forever. And as you can see, they're in pretty remarkable condition given the period of time that they were made. And a couple of them are actually signed by one of my favorite wax anatomists of all time. Wow, it's E.E. E. Hammer. So, in fact, a couple of pieces right behind us are signed. Oh, I see right there, Mr. E. Hammer. E. Hammer. Wow. So, if you're a wax aficionado, you hear the word E.E. E. Hammer, the name E.E. E. Hammer, you're like, cool. I need to see that. Good stuff. Wax. Okay, so what does it take to preserve it? What are the conditions like? What has it been like for the last hundred or so, uh, more than a hundred years? So, people automatically <laughs> assume that you don't want to keep wax in a hot space, which is very, very true, but you also don't want to leave it in a very cold space. It needs to be a mid-temperature because you have problems with cracking. You know, when I bought it, it had been sitting down in a basement for probably two years, but prior to that, it had been sitting in a basement for like 80 years. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that it was, uh, it was tended to. Long story short, I found an amazing guy uh, who is actually the CEO of the Alamo Draft House. And uh, he took the whole collection, we were able to keep everything together, and um, now you see it. Man, it's amazing. In these specific pieces, this is the first American viewing that these will ever have. The very first American viewing. Very nice, man. They've been untouched for many, many years, and they haven't really been um, on exhibition. Yeah, so it's a really, really special exhibition. We don't really have a ton of this stuff in the US, and a lot of it exists in Italy, uh, in Germany, and in other places. To have all those things in one room yeah. is quite rare yeah. and, and, and quite beautiful. If, if, even if you were offended or if you were very interested in the medical aspects of it, just as a form of artwork, it's quite striking. All right, so we are having the very first preview here at the Morbid Anatomy Museum, uh, but there is going to be possibly, a, or no, definitely a permanent place uh, that this will be uh, if you don't make it here now. Uh, and where is that gonna be? What's happening? So this stuff is gonna live in here until uh, about mid-February, and then we're actually opening House of Wax, which is gonna be on Flatbush and Fulton in the City Point building. And it's gonna be every piece that was part of this collection, about 150 to 200 pieces, lining the whole perimeter of this bar. It'll be a place where you can have a drink before you go and watch a movie, because we'll have a full functional two-story theater. Man, it's gonna be so cool. Yeah. Congrats on that. It, it's wild stuff, man. And I, again, I just feel honored that it's been put into my hands to keep after. They've become my family. Oh, man. Since I don't have any real friends, these are my friends. 
We're friends. Yeah, that's true. We're friends. Yeah, sometimes you look like you're made out of wax too, buddy. Oh, thanks. I think <laughs> you're I, glowing. Oh, thank you. It must be the exhibition. Um, a quick, take me on a quick tour and point out a couple things um, that we can talk about. Bum, bum. Okay, so we, right behind us actually, have a whole wall of um, childbirthing and different types of uh, abnormalities of the genitalia. Now that could be syphilis, which I believe we have down here. Um, there's a beautiful hermaphrodite like, just lingering behind you, Sean. I think you should have a nice look at it there. So, yeah, and as you can see in the middle, we have a couple of full figures, which are personally my favorite. They're women giving birth, uh, otherwise known as anatomical venus. These are really remarkable, especially this one, the little hand is grasping the arm. Oh my gosh. It's sort of a harsh reminder of how things were. This may happen. This may happen. Oh, wow. So, wear your prophylactics, kids. <laughs> uh, these are different, you know, dissected babies, other types of syphilis. Obviously, uh, syphilis was very uh, rampant. This is a very interesting figure. This is showing the effects of corsetry oh. on the organs. Oh my god. So, you know, wearing a corset for an elongated period of time will actually push your organs into a specific shape or sequence. And that's what we're seeing here. Wow. Uh, was this a cautionary thing? Or was this a... Yeah, it was, you know, people wore corsets during that period of time. And maybe there were some... <laughs> over Some tragedies uh, at the time. And this is one of the few plaster pieces. Uh -huh. Just yeah. to specify, you know, everything is predominantly wax, and then we have this being a plaster piece. Are are these original cases? All the cases are original, uh, and that was a, another interesting thing to start looking at. Um, you can see, like a lot of them have their original inventory numbers. Yep. And what was cool about that is we could go back to the catalogs and correspond what number went with what abnormality. Some of them are very obvious, and then other ones we're really just learning as we unpack this collection. All right, let's take the last little spin. Let's maybe go down here. Yeah, sure. Um, this is a very interesting cabinet. This is showing various death masks. So typically when you see a death mask, it's made out of plaster. Uh, these are beautifully done in wax. And of course, I don't know if you've noticed this one. Does he look familiar to you? Wait, is that Superman? No. It's actually Napoleon. <laughs> but it looks kind of like Adam Malikovich. No. That's a beautiful piece and it's actually quite rare. So how did they do that? What did... So basically when someone died, a cast was made of the face. Uh, a mold was created and then wax was poured in there. But they used various forms. They would have used plaster, they might have used wax. And I, I think a lot of this stuff was replicated at the time, especially with famous figures and museums wanting this type of stuff. But to have a Napoleon in your collection is almost essential for a 19th century museum, or even a, a museum of, of today. Wow. You got a Napoleon, dude. I got a Napoleon. Wow. Not a Napoleon complex, though, next to you. Right. <laughs> Well, Ryan, thank you so much for showing us around. Congrats, beautiful curation. Thank you. Um, I'm super proud of you for bringing this to the States and getting to share this. It's very exciting. Yeah. And I remember telling you about the whole story, so, you know, I'm glad to share it. You're, you're one of the first people to actually see it put together, so. Oh, yes. Feel and, and I'm sharing it with you guys. <laughs> you thank you so much. We'll be hanging out all night. Cool. Excellent. All right, thanks. Did he say I looked like wax? Whatever, whatever. Some people call me smooth wax, so that's just fine. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Um, hopefully none of that got censored uh, on the internet. Nick, everything turned out okay? They weren't censoring any of that? Everything's good? Yeah, all right, we got it. Uh, thank you, Ryan. Thank you for your time. Beautiful show, and we can't wait to see it uh, when it ends up at the Alamo Draft House there in downtown Brooklyn. Thanks, everybody. Bye.